Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could join us once again. Today we're going to get back into the Word of God in the book of Proverbs. I believe we left off, what, in chapter 10, the first four. But what do we really, as Murray puts it, where the rubber meets the road, what are we really studying in the book of Proverbs? Basically, we're studying something that every single person in this room wants. And I could say every person in the world wants. What they want is peace of mind. I mean, tell me who that you're aware of. I mean, I'm not talking about those with, with medical problems, you know, uh, thinking processes. I'm talking about the run-of-the-mill people in the world. They all want the same thing. We want peace of mind. And what will give you peace of mind? Well, it depends on the individual, doesn't it? You know, some people want a little. Some people want a lot. But the bottom line is, they all want peace of mind. To where they don't have to worry about everything. And really, this is what this book is trying to teach us. It, it brings us to godly wisdom, godly knowledge, and the understanding of godly things. And he breaks it down and he gives us examples, and that's what we've been covering. So with that being said, we're right in the middle of chapter 10. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 5, with wisdom from our Heavenly Father, and it reads... He that gathereth in the summer is a wise, wise son. Again, when it says son or it says man, this is genderless, meaning it could be male or female. It could be son or daughter. It could be man or woman. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Now this has given us a uh, horticulture, or a, excuse me, agriculture thinking process here. But basically what is it saying? It's talking about two different types of people. In other words, you've got people that do what they should do when they should do it. And you've got other people who don't do what they should do when they should do it. In other words, you've got a person who does right all the time when they should do it, and the other is, is I call the big P word, a procrastinator. One that just doesn't do what they should do when they should do it. They might get around to it eventually, but they don't do it in the right time frame. Why is that important? Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what the next hour, what's going to happen in the next hour. So if we put something off that we should be doing and the next hour something causes us to go a different direction, we're not going to get back to what we wanted to do. What's the biggest thing with that? What would you think thinking spiritually would be the biggest thing that people put off right then when they have an opportunity and they put it off that they should do? Well, let's go even before they study the Word. Pray. Huh? Pray. Let's go before pray. Accepting Christ. How many people have you ever talked to that may have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? And you're, in a, you're, you're there, you're being led to talk with them, and you're talking with them, and you get on the subject of Christ, or godly ways, or godly thinking, whatever the case may be, and all of a sudden the phone rings, or somebody else talks to you, or your, your thought process is pulled away from that. And that person at that moment is left angling. Say, how important would that be? For that moment, for that person to to be fully given the opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior for all eternity. Now see, this is the reason I bring this up and the Lord brings it up in this is because this is how Satan operates. That when you are 
being led to do the work for the Lord in whatever fashion, helping someone, being nice to someone, smiling to someone, whatever the case may be, Satan will come along and throw what's called a fiery dart of doubt or confusion to pull you away from what you're doing. Pull you away from, from helping and, and doing what's right. Can you think of anything that ever happens in your life? It can happen all the time. You could be at home talking to someone on the phone and what happens? All of a sudden, call waiting starts beeping and somebody else with a, a problem has nothing to do with what you're discussing. That's a big one. It happens to me quite often. Or you're out in highways and byways. So, so what this is basically talking about, look, if, if you're doing what is right for God, stick with it. Don't allow something to pull you away from doing what's right. Because that's how Satan wants. He wants to pull you away from doing what's right. The flesh will pull you away from doing what's right if you listen to it. So that's what this is talking about. A person who's doing what's right and a procrastinator. Verse 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just. Who are the just? Those that are right with God. That's right. Are right with in right standing with God. That's right. The thing is, just means justified. And how I break that up, justified never sinned. Mm -hmm. In other words, that doesn't mean that they've never sinned. Mm -hmm. That just means when they did sin, they asked God for forgiveness. And when you ask God for forgiveness, He forgives you. It's as simple <laughs> as that. If you're honest with Him. You can't con Him. But it says what blessings are upon it. Don't we all want blessings? In other words, don't we all want good things to happen to us? Of course we do. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. What would that mean? Violence covers the mouth of the wicked. In other words, what comes out of a wicked person's mouth is negative. Lies cheat, conniving. Does it mean here, Pastor, that if you are in right standing with God, the blessings befall you, but that um, if you're I'm trying, I'm trying to find the verse. <laughs> Try verse, okay. Try but, verse 3. But Try verse the three. violence covereth the mouth of the wicked, does that mean if you're a wicked person, the only thing coming out of your mouth is, is the violence. Basically, we could say, let's put it in another frame. Think of the word politician. Yeah. Today's politicians. Mm -hmm. The thing is, and, and especially what's happening, what you've, you've seen recently was like uh, uh, the guy running for mayor in New York. Anthony, yeah. You know, now... You say, well, that's judging. No, I'm, I'm showing you what he's done and what he hasn't repented of. We don't need to go into detail right now. But the thing is, he's done what has all considered, in most cases, to be wrong. And he hasn't repented of it. So he comes out and he, and he says this and that and the other about how he's going to help you and do these things for you. Now, how can you believe someone who's flat out lied to you? And, and, to the, and to the world. See? So basically, like in verse 3, it says, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. It means the same thing. The wicked basically are not going to get ahead. And guess what's going to cause them not to get ahead? Their own mouth. Because their mouth is going to get them in trouble. Their mouth is going to get them in trouble because they're not saying what's right and what comes out of the mouth primarily a lot of times what you're thinking and a lot of people say well I didn't mean to say that yeah you did or you wouldn't have said it yes Harley my view of it is, is um, like we were talking earlier the fact of what where you're back and forth it could be a back and forth thing too like uh, where you're doing good for God and you're keeping up with it on a daily basis and you know 
accepting Christ. You know, everything that you do within pattern, if you make your day for God, then your blessings will be that peace of mind, peace of heart, as the word. If you, you know, go day to day and strive and keep putting God on the back shelf, negativity start coming. Sure. It's just like a person uh, who stops studying the Word of God. Stops, let's just say stops praying. Where they were praying, and now they've stopped praying. Well, why do they stop praying? All kinds of different reasons. They might come up with all kinds of excuses. But the problem is, is that, that they stop giving praise and honor to their Father. And even questions. They stopped all things. Well, guess what? Our, our father says, look, if you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to. I won't talk to you. See, that's just honest. That's, you say, well, that's not a loving God. That's a very loving God because what is he doing? He's giving you what you want. If you want to talk to him, he'll talk with you. And I don't mean in a verbal thing where he comes in the room and just talks like we're talking. It's in the heart and in the mind. And you see so many different ways of how God talks to you. But if you don't want to talk to him, he'll say, fine. I'll leave you to the world and let you see what the world's like. And the world, we have learned, is hateful, conniving, you know, backstabbing, all the negative stuff. That's why the Lord says, to, you are to be born into the world, but not to be of the world. In other words, don't become like the many people of the world. I want you to become like me. Okay. And that's what all this is really talking about, which I'm agreeing with you 100%. Verse 7 says, The memory, the memory of the just is blessed. In other words, you will remember those that did what's right. But the name of the wicked shall rot. In other words, you're going to forget them. They're not going to be... A, they're not going to be worth a hill of beans. Because why? Because they were always hateful to you. Now, you might remember someone who's been hateful you, to you in the past, but you won't remember any good qualities whatsoever. Why? Because they didn't have any. But you'll always remember those who had that kind and gentle spirit. And we all know who I'm talking about here. You know. And, and we've all known people like that, I pray. Because they're very special people and we'll never forget them. And what's really cool about it, if you do what's right with God and love Him, you'll see them again. Which is really cool. Verse 8. The wise in heart. Now what does heart also mean? Mind. The wise in heart, in mind, will receive commandments. That also means they will follow God's commandments. But, a pratting fool shall fall. What's a pratting fool? That's a talking or a babbling fool. We don't know anybody like that, do we? People just bah, 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 bah. they'll just talk and talk. They know they know everything about everything. And no matter what you talk to them about, guess what? They know about it. And not only know about it, they know more than you about it. You know, no, no matter how much you know, they know more than you. You know, I'm not talking to, not that there's not wise people out there. I'm talking about there's a lot of people out there that just jack their jaws. And you, you come to them with talk about godly things or whatever. Guess what? They, they, nine times out of ten, what makes them a pratty fool is they'll change the subject. They'll just change the subject. Why? Because they're a fool. Now think about it. What greater thing is than to talk about the Lord? Although we have to be in certain situations where we can these days, which is unfortunate. Are you are you kids in in regular school, city schools, well, county we schools? We go to a Christian school, private school. Cool. Okay, then you can talk about the Lord. Yes, See, you're you all lucky. <laughs> Seriously, because there's a lot of places today you can't. They don't they don't want you to. No. It's a shame. But they'll pay for it. That's okay. So, verse 9 says, He that walketh uprightly, walketh surely. Those that do what is right, 
they walk and they and they do what's right and, and good things happen to them but he that perverteth his ways shall be known what does perverteth mean do, huh do things opposite of god evil things purposely yeah say in other words they purposely turn or try to turn somebody else away from god they perverteth their ways or someone else's it would be like it would be like a husband and wife let's say let's say that the, the husband is is following the ways of the Lord but the wife decides that she doesn't want to follow the ways of the Lord so she keeps her husband from following the ways of the Lord by whatever means that she can that is perverting the ways of that person it's causing them now granted it's their own choice but to keep peace at that point in the family which turns out you know unevenly yoked will never be able to stand but she'll keep trying to pull that person away from the Lord that is perverting the ways that's what it means and, and what does it say fool shall fall period verse 9 he that walketh uprightly walketh surely uh, I did that 9 verse 10 he that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow but a pratting fool shall fall here's another thing about a babbling fool but he that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow what what do you think this is talking about he that winketh with the eye now to fully understand this I had to go to the ancient languages I went to the Syriac writings and the Arabic writings and they added one word to this verse they they said he that winketh with the eye with fraud causeth sorrow which makes more sense he that winketh with the eye with fraud well, what would winketh with the eye with fraud mean meaning that if you see somebody that's doing what's wrong you give them a wink you know like I didn't see nothing yeah you did <laughs> they're stealing or they're they're being fraudulent or they're being hateful or whatever and by you because it happened in front of you don't do something even if it just means remove yourself away from the situation you're part of that problem because you saw what happened wouldn't this also be just down off downright straight dishonesty from the person absolutely it could it could be both but see where where I'm saying with he that winketh with the eye in other words have you ever seen somebody that I've seen this happen I can't exactly remember what the situation was but they did something that wasn't right and they looked at me and they saw that I saw them and they go that's kind of what it means oh, shh. Shh. you didn't see nothing yeah I did you know I saw you do something that was wrong yeah now what what is the big thing today well I don't know about today it's been for for quite a lot of years stool pigeons they call them or rats snitches whatever they've been called these names for as long as I can remember uh, there's something recently on on the news that uh, this guy huh yeah and they said that if he gets put into prison now he's he's guilty of doing a crime right and if he's put into prison that he'll never see the light of day because they'll kill him in prison because he's a rat now that came from a lawyer and it's probably true but the point is who do you want to you you have got to make a choice in life whether or not you can stand before your Heavenly Father someday which everybody in here will do at one point and in, in, in eventually can you stand before the Lord and say I did what was right or and hear those beautiful words well done thou good and faithful servant or do you want to stand before him wink wink throughout life and him say get out of my sight I never knew you because you were 
you were you, you were as, as this word says a prating fool because that's what you were now does that mean that we need to go around every corner and look for everything righteous and if it's not righteous tell somebody about it? that's not what this is talking about it's talking about if it's brought to your attention of someone that is doing something wrong in your face just don't dismiss it even the least you can do is get out of the situation instead of accepting it just because they're doing well that's not me hey you're in their presence you saw a crime happen something negative happen now well, we can also talk about with the Word of God you've got a brother or a sister in Christ and that brother and sister in Christ, meaning that they have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, they believe in Him just like you do, and they believe that they're saved. And they are, because they believe in Christ and what he, the price that He paid. However, they're doing something that is sinful. They're doing something flat out sinful against, against God. According to God, are you supposed to just turn around and walk away? Or are you to approach them and say, look, this is, this is what I see. This is going to hurt you in the future with God if you don't do something about it. Or whatever the Lord leads you to say. See, that's the key. If they're doing something sinful, you need to say something to them. And what does the word also say? What if they say, shut your mouth, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. What are you supposed to do according to the Word of God at that point? Go back and get somebody else to carry Somebody you. with you. Why? Because there's, more, there's a witness to you telling them. And it's also a witness that, hey, it's not just me that mm -hmm. hears this. Yeah. It's not just me that sees this. Now, again, if that person says, both of you get out of my face. I don't want nothing to do with you. What are you supposed to do then? Spiritually speaking, and you're you're all in the family of God now. Keep that in mind. What are you supposed to do then? No, no, no. There's one more step. You bring it before the church. Oh. You bring it before the whole congregation. You say, well, that's pretty drastic. It's meant to be drastic. Because what are you really fighting for? You're fighting for their soul. You don't want them to die in their sin. Again, you better be sure it's sin and not just judgment. Not, not that they're just doing something you don't like. No, they're sinning against God, and you need to be able to prove it in the Word of God that they're sinning against God's Word. That's why you got your witnesses. That's why you got your witnesses. You're, you're all right. You're all right. on the same page. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, verse 11. The mouth of a righteous man. What is a righteous man or woman? One that does right according to God's word. A righteous man is a well of life, meaning they have full of life, full of knowledge and wisdom, godly wisdom. But violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Well, we can we can look at that and understand it because those that are wicked they speak wicked things. They lie. They cheat. They steal. Away from God. Verse 12 continues, Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Now that's pretty heavy. Hatred stirreth up strife. Why? Because hatred is like a cancer. If you hate, you say, well, wait a minute, God hates, God hates sin, right? Well, then I can hate. Yeah, you can hate sin. In other words, if you hate, you better hate God's way. In other words, the only thing God hates is sin. He doesn't want to see someone destined to what some people call hell's fire. In other words, to be blotted out from existence. He created them to, be, to live forever. He doesn't want to see them blotted out. So he hates that sin that will cause them to blot out. But love covereth all sins. What do you think that means? Love covereth all sins. Does that mean the sin doesn't exist anymore? No. That means you can forgive the sinner. You can still hate the sin, but you can forgive the sinner. 
like those three young ladies that were held captive for 10, 11 years, whatever it was. Did you hear this latest news with the, the little one? I don't know how big she is. It looked like she's about four foot nothing. She was reading that paper, and she said, I forgive you, but I'll never forget you. That's, that's pretty powerful. Well, that showed godly love. That showed godly love. See, the thing is, a person can sin against you. Better said, when a person sins against you. You can go through life and, and hate them for all these years, but you know what? Hate grows. It's like a cancer. It doesn't end. It doesn't stop. But if you forgive what they did to you, and it's not that you're forgetting what they did to you, but you're not allowing the sin and that grudge and that hatred for you to carry on your shoulders anymore. You're saying, that's not who I want to be. I want to get rid of it. Yeah, they did wrong to me. Now, some people say, no, wait a minute now. they got to ask for forgiveness to be forgiven. Not which, written. Huh? That's not written anywhere. It's not written anywhere. But the thing is, a lot of people, and I've even said, if, if Ross, you sin against me, and, and we talk about it, now I can, still, I can still forgive you on my own, but you, let's say, in this particular case, you're still hateful about it and, 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 and all this, negative, negative, negative. I got a person here, I'll, I'll use another example. I got a person here on, on this road. Not every time, but a lot of the times, me and Donald will pull out of the driveway and he lifts up his middle finger every time. He doesn't like this at all. doesn't want anything to do with it. Now, I've kicked him off my property, told him not to come back before. By the way, he's communicated, and we're in mixed company and, and children here, young adults. Well, some children. Where, where is he? Okay, he's exploring. But we got children here, too, so I won't be verbal about it. But the thing is, I stopped him from coming on the property. But the thing is, now I can carry a grudge and be hateful, and every time I see him, just do it back at him. But that's not who I want to be. See, I want to be one that people eventually, if given an opportunity, can come to and say, well, what does the word say here? Or, or, or what, what's happening today according to God's Word? That's what I want to leave the door open for. And not just that, all the people around me. If I started behaving like that, what about all the people around me who might eventually see that? Well, don't go to him. He's nuts. He's not, he's not being what he says he is. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's where this is really going. And when, when you keep that hatred inside of you, it doesn't get better. It gets worse. But when you walk in love and say, you know what, no matter who they are, what they're doing, I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to forgive them. Now think about what Christ did on the cross. He forgave the world. He forgave those that stuck a spear in his side. He forgave those that nailed nails into his hands and his feet. He forgave those that spit on him. Now that's love. You say, well, I couldn't do it. Yeah, you can do it if you do it God's way. You say, why? Well, now, does that mean that you need to be a wuss? No. Let me tell you something. The strongest person in the world is a godly man or a woman because they'll deal with every situation through God's eyes. Now to them, you might be a wuss. But to God, you're important and you're being God-like. And that's what he's trying to teach us here. Thirteen, in the lips of him that hath understanding. What is understanding of? His word. Wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding, meaning that they basically are void of 
God. In other words, you do what's right, you're going to have wisdom. You're going to, have, you're going to know why this world is doing what it's doing. Why it is behaving the way it is behaving. Can anybody tell me right now why this world is behaving the way it's behaving? Let's forget the world. Let's just talk about the United States, the people in this country. Why are the majority of them behaving the way they're behaving? They push God out of their life. Now, they say they know God, but the problem is they're not being God-like. How can you say that you know and love God if you're not being God-like? Because God says you're going to be more like me if you believe me. He says you will follow my commandments and do them. You won't just talk about them. You'll do my commandments for those who love me. So what does that mean? Well, if you're not obeying his commandments, you're not loving him. And don't try to say that you are. You're just conning yourself. You're not conning God. Because God said it in his word. Those who obey my commandments are those who love me. And, oh, I should say, and do them are those that love me. But, there's people out there that are void of understanding. They don't know why things are happening the way they're happening. Why? Because they're void of understanding. Why? Because they're void of God. It's as simple as that. This isn't brain surgery. It's really that simple. Fourteen. Wise men, lay up knowledge. What does it mean to lay up knowledge? Build it up and keep it. Well, how do you get rid of knowledge? You don't do it. You don't follow it. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Always near destruction. And we're not just talking about a physical destruction. We're talking about an eternal destruction. I think what we're all talking about here, we're talking about our eternal souls. All this is talking about our souls, that when God created it, He created it to last forever. He never created your soul to be blotted out from existence. That wasn't His intention to begin with. Or He wouldn't have created you. He created you to be His child. And why? Because He loves you. He has always loved you. He has never stopped loving you. He may have hated some of the things that you've done, but when you repented of them, guess what? It's not in his memory anymore. It's blotted out from his existence. doesn't exist. Isn't that cool? Now, we remember them. We remember every bad thing, and we should. Why? So we don't repeat it. So we don't repeat it. You, you look and frown over there. You don't, you don't believe that? Why? Because if it was, it was blotted out from God's memory, then he wouldn't know if you repeated the infraction, let's say. <laughs> God cannot look at sin. He can, he, and the thing is, he hates it. And, and, and to my personal third level of understanding, that's why Christ came into play. Because Christ is the one dealing with it. And I know God and Christ are one of the same, and it's hard to differentiate between the two. That's a whole different subject for a different time. But the point is, when you sin, God hates that sin. Especially when you know better and you, you sin anyways, and you, you're basically turning from God. However, when you go to him and say, Lord, I screwed up. Yeah, no, he already knows this anyway. Lord, I screwed up. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Now, what does that mean? That means you truly, in your heart, mean that you're sorry. And you're not going to, you're going to try your very darndest not to ever do that again. That's wiped out of the book of life. It's not in the book anymore. Every one of your unrepented of sins is written down. It's in a book, the book of life. But if you repent of that sin, it's like someone took a big old eraser and removed it. It doesn't exist anymore. 
And the only way it will ever be entered in that book again is if you sin again. Even if it's the same sin. It'll be back in the book. That's why when you have Holy Communion and you do it properly, or any time, you repent of your sin or sins, it's, He's forgiven you. It doesn't exist to Him anymore. It's not there. He's not going to carry a bunch of your dead weight with Him. It's gone. And guess what? If you truly repent, you're not carrying it anymore either. That's what's really cool about it. You don't have to carry that baggage anymore. Well, why do I still remember it? So, like Becca said, so you don't repeat it. Fifteen. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Now this, I'll tell you right now, I struggled with this. I struggled with this. Again, until I went to the ancient manuscripts. <laughs> that is a lot different. Basically, meaning, what I got out of this, there is not a rich man on earth that did not gain his riches except by those poorer than him. Hmm. So, if the poor is destroyed, so will the rich man be destroyed. Because he'll have no one to pull from. Is that one the ancient man? Okay. That makes more Which sense. really shows us where this world is headed. Why do you have what... I'm sure you've heard this statement. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Why? Because the rich are getting richer. The rich are getting richer because the poor are getting poorer. And that's what this is really talking about. And, and I struggled and struggled and struggled. But this is in the uh, this is in the Syriac. This is in the Vulgate. This is in the Aramaic. Now, for you that haven't been here before, when I'm talking about, have you ever heard of those terms, Syriac and Vulgate and Aramaic? These are basically old, old manuscripts of the Bible that was really before the King James Bible was written. When they wrote the King James Bible, they took from the Germanic, they took from the Vulgate, they took from the Syriac, and they made our, our word in English. But those books were written long before 1611 King James. Just remember, the King James was written, inspired by God, yes, it's true work, but it was 1,611 years after the fact where the Syriac and the Vulgate and the Germanic were a little bit closer to the time. Say. Not that they uh, were 100%. Nobody's 100% except God and His Word. That's why we always pray before we study the Word of God. Because we want to make sure that it is God leading us in His study and not just me up here saying blah, 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 blah. We want to make sure God is the one that's leading all of our thoughts. And guess what? We can also disagree. You know, you don't have to believe everything I say, but you better believe what God has to say. That's what's important. You know. And I said, I'm not saying this just to you. I've said this to everybody before. You're just new at it. So, new here, anyways. All right. Verse 16. The labor of the righteous, those that do what's right, tendeth to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. In other words, if a person is going to be a sinner, they're going to labor at it. If a person is going to do what's right, they're going to labor at it. That means they're going to work at it. They're going to work hard at it. They're going to try and do what's right. Just like uh, Harley was talking about earlier. You know, you got to you got to think about this every day. You know, just like what every day you guys eat breakfast. Why do you eat breakfast? Because you're hungry, right? <laughs> or you wouldn't eat breakfast. You're hungry. Well, guess what? Your soul gets hungry, too. And the only way your soul can get fed is from this book. See? So your soul needs to be fed every day. See? It's important. Now, there's a lot of people that don't feed their soul except on 
when we gather here or when others go to other churches. That's the only time they're feeding their soul, hopefully, because a lot of churches don't even carry your Bible anymore. Here it's a requirement. Why? Because I don't want you to hear from me. I want you to hear from him. See. So, the labor of the righteous tendeth to life. That's life eternal. The fruit, in other words, what you get out of it, of the wicked, to sin. In other words, you, if you're a sinner, you're going, you're going to reap the rewards of that sin, which is what? Doubt, frustration, heartache, pain, negativity, thinking, all those things. 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction. That also means obeys instruction. What kind of instruction? Godly instruction. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof Aerith, just like what we are talking before. You go to a person who's sinning, and they're sinning against the Word of God. They're sinning against one of His commandments. You go to them saying, this is what the Lord says about what you're doing is sinful to Him and to everyone else. Now, they can either accept that or reject it. But if they reject it, it says, refuseth, reprove error. In other words, they will refuse the Word of God. They're going to err. To who? To God. In other words, sin, they will not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, how important is that? That means, isn't that what we're all working for? To achieve the fullness of the God, of our Father, His kingdom? Isn't that what this is all about? To where we can lay down at the end of the day now and we, we might do what's right but still there's another day but there's going to come a time in your life that there's never going to be another day because it's only going to be one day forever with your father and every day will be a good day every day every day will be happiness every day will pe be peaceful there will be nobody else around you ever that will come to you and say anything negative, anything harmful, because all will love God and all will love you, and you will love all. Now that's hard for us to understand in these flesh bodies, but that's the way it's going to eventually be. And that's why our Father's trying to teach us now how to live this way. All right. I guess we'll end here. I wanted to get farther, but. Are there any questions about what's been discussed today? Are there any questions about any other work that we've covered? The importance of this is that how we started this. We want peace of mind. We we want to be able to to live and let live. But the problem we have today is there's so many people that are living in the world today. They're so, they're so keyed up about how much stuff they have or how much better stuff they have than you or all, all these things that they think that they need. Well, your Father is teaching us you need to only care about of what you actually require as far as what God requires of you which is only one thing, which is what? That you love your God with all your heart and mind. So you love Him. But you can't love Him if you're not following His commandments. You can't do it. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. Why do you think you have so many people in life that drink a lot of alcohol and do a lot of drugs? Now, now, wait a minute. They, they say that they're partying that they're having fun. Right? I said it. I was that way at one point. But I come to realize is that I wasn't happy with the situation. I wasn't. And I, I was lying to myself. Definitely lying to my God. But the point is, I real once I gave all that up and truly loved God His way, I was never happier. 
I never had more stuff given to me. Yeah, I worked for it. But you know what? I didn't work that hard for it, not compared to what I got. Because I have everything in my life that I need right now. I said, need. Do I want a trip to California to go see my grandkids? Yeah. Do I want to go to the beach and in, in, in whatever uh, East Coast? Yeah. But I don't need it. I'm not going to lose sleep over because I don't have it. But I have everything that I need. I don't need any more. And what makes me the happiest now when you talk about partying, you know where I really party? Is when there's somebody across from me all of a sudden gets it. The light bulb comes on. That gives me chills. You know, when someone has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a party. Why? Because at that point I realize that they're going to live forever. And God used me as an instrument. Isn't that cool? We'll end here and pick this back up again next week. To God be the glory.